Hey, man, you want to learn how to set the tempo of your session in Pro Tools and why it's important? Well, let me show you something. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. And today we're going to be talking about how to actually find the tempo of an audio file that you've imported into your Pro Tools session why it's important and you know how to get it going pretty quickly all right so i'm going to show you actually two methods one of them is going to be a simple way and the other one is a little bit more complicated but i really love it and it's called identify beat the first one will be tap to tempo i'm going to show both of those methods right here in pro tools now before i do that i do want to explain to y'all why i feel it's important to have the tempo of your session locked in especially in pro tools one thing that you'll notice is that um, we have a editing mode called grid mode here. I'm just going to switch over to my screen real quick. Grid mode basically allows you to make edits to a specified time and grid. Now, if I set my grid to be bars and beats, what I can do by having the tempo is actually have these grid values align with eighth notes or quarter notes or whatever that is also represented within my music. So if I have the right tempo in, then the grid and the grid values and these grid lines will align with what I actually have in my music. An example of that would be like if I select a four bar part of the beat that will actually just by me selecting it and on the grid, it will actually represent four bars in my music. So that is going to make editing, flying hooks, moving stuff around your session very, very easy and almost thoughtless once you have it set up properly. Another reason is time-based effects like delays. When you're using a delay, to make sure that delay or that echo effect is in time with the music, it's important to have the tempo locked into your session or at least know the tempo of the beat or of the musical project that you're working on. That way those delays can hit at the proper quarter note, eighth note, 16th note, et cetera, timing, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at my Pro Tools session. I'm gonna start off by showing y'all the easy way of how to find the tempo, and it's gonna to be to tap the tempo. So here we are in my edit window in my Pro Tools session. One thing that I wanna do here first is just open up the transport window. In Pro Tools, we have a lot of shortcuts we can use. I could just hit Command Numeric 1 on the numeric keypad if you have it, and that'll open up this transport window, or you can always just go up to the window menu, hit Transport, all right, and that'll also open up the transport window. Now, this tap to tempo is actually pretty easy. All that we have to do here is select the tempo value in our tempo field here. So right where it says tempo, I'm going to select that value where it says 120. And I could just start tapping using the letter T on my keyboard, tapping in quarter note timing values of whatever the beat is, okay? How is that gonna help me with finding the tempo on this beat? That's not gonna help so much, but if I had already, let's say if I'm about to start a project brand new and I wanna just kinda of tap the tempo and the speed that I'm feeling in uh, to my session before I actually start making my beat or doing my recordings, I could tap it in just like that. But in this case, since we actually have a beat, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna play the beat and tap along at the same time. So before I actually play this, let me hook up my wavy one studio headphones so that nothing bleeds into this microphone here and i can hear what i'm working on these wavy wayne studio headphones are professional quality um, recording and mixing headphones they have great flat frequency response for referencing and you can find them on my website at wavywayne.com all right so i got my headphones on i'm gonna turn this up a little bit make sure my speakers are muted Cool. And so what I'm going to do is simply just play the song from the beginning or at any point. Mainly you want to do this probably when the drums are active. So I'm just going to play the song. I'm going to select in my tempo field and I'm going to use the letter T on my keyboard to tap the tempo. All right, here we go. Tap, 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 tap. Quarter note. One, two, three, four. Uh, tap, tap, tap. Uh. Once you have the value, you just want to hit the enter key or return to actually lock that in. And now you see that my tempo is set to 70 beats per minute. Now, this is not always the most accurate way because this is only going to allow us to tap whole 
uh values right so i can't tap in a 70.5 it won't allow me to get in between there so if the beat is not a whole number then this is not going to be the most accurate way which is why i'm also in this video going to show you how to do it in the most accurate way how to find the tempo in the most accurate way that i know using a, a technique called identify beat now this is pretty accurate and as you can see like i was saying before using my grid is going to be super easy now right to where i can like make a selection i'm just making a two bar selection on grid a one bar selection i can make that on grid and when i play this back it should loop pretty pretty good right so i tapped that in it worked perfectly you can see my counters are even counting in time with the music two three four one two three four right everything is synced up if i wanted to copy and paste move stuff around it's going to also allow me to be able to do like stutters and stuff real easily let's say i drop to a, a eighth note and just want to grab that first kick and stutter it a few times right all i did was duplicate it All right, let me clap, double clap there. All right, this is how you can get really creative really easily just by finding that tempo, all right? One other thing that I will advise though to make this even more accurate is that if you're using the tap the tempo, once you have that tempo locked in, if you notice, you see how the beginning of my audio file does not exactly start at that waveform. If I go up to the slip mode and make a selection there and then let's just uh, delete that part that where we're not starting and drag this closer to the beginning. Now, my actual first transient is, let me bring it even closer. My first transient is actually at my song start marker, lining up with that very first bar beat position. And it's just gonna make my overall timing of everything that much tighter. Now, this is something that you don't have to worry about when you are doing um, identified beat though. Okay. Hey man, let me be your guide to getting Pro Tools certified. Whether you're brand new to Pro Tools or if you've been using the software for years, this course will get you the skills you need to demonstrate a fundamental competency in mixing and editing in Pro Tools. Having a Pro Tools certification provides real life tangible benefits and allows you to stand out on your resume and from your peers in the industry. Registration is open now and space is very limited. So don't wait, let's get certified. Let's now jump into part two of this lesson and I'll show y'all how to find the tempo in the most accurate way using Identify Beat. So with Identify Beat, you simply want to start off by making a two bar selection and then we're gonna tell Pro Tools, hey, this is two bars and then from that two bar selection and time, Pro Tools will be able to generate a tempo for us. Now, how do I make my selection? I like to use my arrow keys. You can do this on the fly. Uh, whether you're on a, a Mac or a PC, or whatever, you can use the down arrow to start your selection and the up arrow to end the selection. And then you can come in later and actually modify that selection. So I'm going to show you all that real quick. So I'm just going to use slip mode to do this. I'm going to back my cursor up back to the beginning of the session. Now, since my very first transient is at the very beginning, and I typically only want to do this with a part of the session that is playing the drums i don't want to do this necessarily if it had a piano intro or something like that i would let it fly matter of fact i'm not even going to use this intro because most of the time the beat is going to have some piano intro or something at the beginning that's soft and the transients are not very uh, pronounced like we can see these transients very very easily um, because the drums are very percussive here so this is what i'm going to do i'm just going to play it from this section and I'm going to use this first uh, downbeat here as my bar one section. All right. So I'm just going to play it. I'm going to hit the down arrow to start the selection and the up arrow to end the selection. Here we go. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four, and up. Okay. So I just made a two bar selection. I'm going to do that again two, three, four, down, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, and up, okay? So down arrow to start the selection, up arrow to end the selection. It works best if you are in slip mode so that we can adjust these selection points freely because we wanna get 
really, really accurate with this method. So now that I have my rough selection set out, I'm going to zoom in. All right. Use any method of zooming in that you want. If you need if you need more help on these shortcuts and stuff, consider joining my Pro Tools certification class. We are enrolling right now. OK, so I'm just going to hold the shift key. And extend to that transient right at the start. When you are making edits in Pro Tools, it's best to get up on the zero crossing points. That'll help uh, make the cleanest uh, selections and edits possible. The zero crossing point is the point when that waveform meets that solid line that's cutting through it. That's going to be the zero crossing point. So I got my starting point. I'm going to go ahead and hit the right arrow to get to the end of my selection. So the left arrow takes us to the beginning. The right arrow takes us to the end. Need to zoom out a little bit. This looks like the point where that uh, beat is changing over and I'm going to zoom in. And of course, we see there is no zero crossing point here, but I can just tell just by looking at the waveforms that something changed right there. Right. Is that it, this is going to come with practice to know exactly where those points are at. And you can also verify that the two bar selection is accurate by listening. And I also like to look right. All right. So um, here we go. I'm going to play this. And if it is a good two bar loop that I have selected, it will loop seamlessly. Let's hear it. All right, now that looped perfectly. Next thing I want to do now is just go straight up to the event menu and choose identify beat. Now this is where I'm going to tell Pro Tools how long my selection is. And by them calculating the what I say, hey, this is bar one, this is bar three. Pro Tools will then be able to take those calculations and generate the tempo for me. OK, so now I'm just going to say to my start location, even though it's not bar one, we can only call it that because our point really here is to lock this up to the grid and to find the tempo accurately. I don't really care about the bar beat positions necessarily. Um, that's not going to help me when it comes to editing for sure. All right. So. I'm just going to say, hey, this first location is bar one, right? Since it's a two bar loop, we got bar two starting here and then we're ending at bar three. So the end location is bar three. I'm going to hit OK and I get a tempo of sixty nine point nine nine four. So our tap the tempo was really good. It worked really, really well. Um, so now I'm just I just need to come here. And what, now that I got 69.994, I can assume that we're going to round that to 70 because no producer is going to give me a beat at 69.9994, okay? <laughs> so I'm just going to assume that that is going to be 70. And to enter that in and lock it in as my official tempo at 70 beats per minute, what I want to do is first delete this bar beat marker. I don't need this anymore. Um, now I was just using this to find out the tempo. Now that I know I'm going to delete that, to delete it, I'm just going to hold the Option key on my Mac. It's going to be alt if you're on a PC. I have a mental note of what this uh, tempo was, so I can come right here and say, you know what? We was at 70 beats per minute. And now I can jump into grid mode. And when I make my selections and, and my loops and stuff, everything should be perfect. All right. All right, family, I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. That is a quick look at how to find the tempo of your track in Pro Tools. That's using tap the tempo and also a great method I love called identify beat. Let me know what other methods you have of finding the tempo. I know y'all gonna be like, you can just use mixed and key. <laughs> I'd rather do the work myself and I know that it's accurate. All right, I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. Make sure y'all check out the website. Maybe copy you a pair or two of these studio quality headphones. And, um... Yeah, man, y'all be dope.